Hello everybody, I'm uh, Matan Drottala. I will present uh, myself. I, I worked for, for a few years uh, in, uh, in Ireland as a structural engineer for a timber company. Then I, I moved back to Italy and I worked a few years for, for Ixlam Dolomiti as a structural engineer again. And uh, currently I'm uh, working as a technical consultant for, for Rotoblast. Okay, in the, in, the, in the lecture of today, we are going to talk about uh, the waterproofing and the air tightness in uh, timber buildings. And in particular, we're going to see um, how to, to seal a timber building, how to, to deal with the durability. And um, we're going to explain the membranes as well. We are going to talk about how, why membranes are so important in the design of a, of a timber building. And uh, we are going to see, last but not least, uh, the reaction to fire that our membranes have. So, first of all, it is important to, to talk about the, the physics. It's very important to, to know some theory be before actually starting to talk through um, all the membranes uh, and how to, to choose them. So, how does it work? So, in, in, the, in the air, we have uh, uh, always vapor, and, uh, and the vapor is um, is, is trying to escape from uh, from the building because inside usually there is a high pressure, so it, it is very important to design properly the the, the wall build up or the, the roof build up so that uh, we don't have uh, structural issues of our timber structure, with which especially with a, with a timber structure is is very important to to avoid, and um, and of course to to make sure that the people. The, the inhabitants of the buildings are are living in comfort. So um, basically, when uh, the um, the vapor is passing through the air and the vapor is passing through the um, the wall, um, there can be some issues, and these issues can be interstitial condensation, which is a, a condensation that happens inside the wall, and also superficial condensation, which is um, the same thing, but it happens on the outside, on the on the outer surface of uh, the wall. So both of these um, both of these um, issues are very uh, are very bad for our timber structure. So it is very important to understand how to avoid them. So let's have a look first of all at the damages that uh, superficial condensation, for instance, can. Uh, can make on our buildings. So superficial condensation is uh, uh, a problem which is uh, which affects mostly the um, the visual part of the um, of our building. So the finish of our all of our wall, for for example, in this case scenario, and uh, uh, the damages caused by interstitial condensations are um, are worst for for two main reasons. First of all, because usually they happen. It's a condensation which happens inside the, um, the wall thickness, and so you, therefore you, you cannot see it, so you cannot see the damage. That's why it's very dangerous. And second of all, interstitial condensation is, is very bad because it can actually affect the structure. So if you have condensation which is happening inside your wall uh, and you have a timber structure, of course you know that timber is very sensitive to to water and to to vapor, and therefore um, water and and humidity can actually uh, damage severely our structure. This is, for example, um, an example uh, of uh, what I was uh, previously talking about. For example, in this uh, in this floor buildup. Um, some some designers chose the wrong membranes and therefore we had um, condensation on the inside and as you can see when they when they opened up the um, the, the floor build up they, they saw that all the timber structure inside was completely rotten so this is uh, a picture to keep in mind when you're designing uh, a timber um, structure for example is is a picture that you always have to keep in mind because the the design with membranes with the right membranes is very important to to make sure the durability of your building uh, works in the right way so let's uh, let's see how condensation and um, how the condensation works in particular 
So when we have um, um, air, it always contains uh, vapor, of course, and uh, the hotter the, um, the air is, the, the more uh, vapor it can contain. So when we are cooling down the same amount of air as we see in the image here, so uh, we, are we just have the, um, the same amount of air with the same amount of vapor uh, inside, and we can see that uh, while we are cooling it down, we are reaching the the saturation. And when actually we are, uh, we when we reached that sat saturation point, we have uh, all the um, the water molecules that are contained into the water. Uh, they have to escape from it. So uh, to explain this in easier in easier words, we can talk about we can, for instance, think about. Um, hot air, which is coming in contact with a uh, with a cold surface, and as we all know, we see the um, all the condensation, so the um, the water drops onto the on, onto the cold surface, and that's because uh, the water cannot be contained anymore into into the air. And so, temperature, as we understood now, is very important, and humidity. Uh, so th these two things are very important to keep in mind. Um, the relationship be between temperature and humidity, that's uh, really the, um, the two things that you have to talk about. So for just to give an example, uh, a family of four people is producing approximately 10 kilos of humidity a day, just uh, uh, cooking through our breath, for instance. And so this can uh, actually make a very unhealthy uh, place in which we live in. So the, the easiest thing to do, most of all, is uh, ventilating the room. Of course, that is not always possible because, for instance, if it's uh, very cold outside, if it's winter time, uh, if you open up the window for, for too long, you really have some uh, also uh, a loss of, um, of the heat that you have inside your, your building. So um, another uh, another way is use of a uh, hygroscopic material, but that's not always easy. So really, the um, the way um, how this works is through uh, transpiration. So pretty much our our walls and our roofs are con continuously breathing. So vapor and hair is continuously um, tr uh, tr uh, passing through, really. So again, temperature and humidity are, uh, again, I highlighted it and again because it's uh, the most important thing. So how does it work exactly? I, I told you that the, um, the wall is breathing. So basically we have on the inside a bigger amount of, uh, of vapor and, um, and a higher pressure as well. So this, this, waiter, this vapor tends to migrate, tends to pass through the, our wall build up and um, as I told you before there's another thing to, to keep in mind passing through the um, the wall build up is gonna encounter um, zones with different temperature and um, we, we just explained before that when uh, the vapor uh, contained into the air reaches uh, a certain temperature which is about 13 degrees usually uh, it can condensate. So uh, we don't want our vapor to condensate on the surface, neither on the surface or on the inside of our wall, for example. So uh, the temperature is, is very important, as I told you before. And uh, this is um, a picture done with a, with a thermal camera. And as you can see, the, um, uh, the parts of our building, they are not always the same temperature. We have uh, places, for instance, like around the windows, for instance, or um, when we have cold bridges, we we have uh, um, the temperature that is dropping down into some parts of our structure. And this is very bad because it, it can cause that condensation because we always have vapor inside. And uh, if the, um, the temperature is, is dropping down, it can be very dangerous. So it's uh, it's very important to to talk about the thermal conductivity, which is uh, um, this this lambda here that we are we are seeing. So different materials, 
they have different uh, thermal conductivities. In timber structure, for instance, we are lucky in a sense because uh, the, the timber has a very low conductivity and, um, and therefore it helps out the, um, uh, you know, to, uh, to isolate to the insulation of uh, the structure itself. And um, yeah, so we, we can see here in the graphic some other construction materials, for example, some very common construction materials and concrete, for instance, or clay bricks are, they have a higher thermal conductivity, for, for example. So let's uh, have a look at what, um, how to, to study the condensation inside a wall buildup. So um, we study it through this um, glazer test method and uh, that's a way to find the, the dew point inside uh, a wall construction. So we can see in the graphic two lines. One of them is uh, the, the vapor content and the other one is the temperature. And uh, if the, um, the two graphics, if the two lines are colliding, like in the first, in the first case scenario, we really have uh, an issue of condensation. In this case scenario, we have interstitial condensation. If the, um, if the two lines are, uh, are apart, that it's not a problem. So the glazer test worked and we are, we are sure, let's say, that condensation is not happening inside our wall. Another very important thing ab about material is uh, the, the SD. And uh, the SD is, um, is an indicator uh, of um, the resistance that uh, a certain material is offering to the passage of, um, of the vapor. So we're going to see again the, the SD when we talk about membranes, because it, it's very important to, to study the SD when, uh, when you're choosing the, um, the right membrane. So um, it's uh, measured, the SD is measured in meters because is the thickness, uh, is it, you, you know, it's uh, the thickness of an equivalent layer of air, which offer the same resistance to the passage of vapor as that of the material. So that's why it's uh, in meters. And um, so in, uh, inside our wool uh, thickness, it is very important to have, uh, um, you know, vapor control layers on the inside. And it's very important in the s at the same time to have uh, uh, materials with very low thermal conductivity on the outside. So insulation, insulation material on the outside so that our, our wool remains warm and there isn't too much vapor passing through. And if we try to, to keep these two things together, we, we are sure that we, we won't have condensation. But what do we do in the case that we, when, for instance, we have a, a buildup, which is in this situation. So when uh, we study it and uh, we see that there might be some uh, interstitial um, condensation. So we, we are going to use membranes, of course. So um, all the membranes are uh, water, they, they have water tightness. So that's uh, a common characteristic of, um, of all the membranes. And another characteristic that all the membranes have is the wind tightness. So all of them can be used for, for the wind tightness and, uh, and air tightness as well. What, what changes is uh, what we just uh, explained, so the, the SD, so the, um, the resistance to, to the vapor passage inside, um, ins uh, through the, the membrane. There is another main difference uh, in, uh, in membranes, and uh, it is the following. So we have uh, membranes which are monolithic and other membranes which are microporous. What is the difference? The, the monolithic membranes are, the, uh, the vapor can pass through with, the, um, with a chemical reaction. So as you can see in the image, all the, the, the molecules are um, in contact with each other. So it's a unique layer, let's say, uh, let's say like that. In the, the microporous products, 
uh, all the molecules are produced in a way that there are some some very very uh, small gaps between a molecule and the other. They are not holes, of course, because they they are still waterproof, so uh, we don't have holes. But the the water molecules, the vo the vapor can pass through um, through capillarity, uh, you know, uh, throughout these small gaps that are formed. And another thing to to keep in mind is the the water tightness, of course. And I want to spend two words on on this. Uh, I s I told you before that all the membranes are um, they offer uh, as a feature water tightness, and that's of course a very important feature because we have to protect our building and our structure from the the water. But uh, they are not to they are they're not meant to to withstand the um, the steel water. So. Uh, let's uh, let's give um, an example. For instance, when you have um, a balcony, and um, there is uh, you know uh, it's raining on top of it. First of all, you have to design the balcony in the proper way. So uh, you have to design an inclined, slightly inclined surface of the balcony so that um, the water can can escape very quickly uh, from uh, the um, you know the structure itself. Of course, you have to place as well a membrane which is protecting um, our structure from this running water. So uh, let's uh, explain what water column is. It's a, it's a test that is uh, that is done onto all the membranes, and it's basically uh, a water uh, a column uh, of water is placed on top of a membrane. Of course, uh, it doesn't have um, a bottom um, cover, so water can can pass through, and it measured. It is measured the the time um, which the, the membrane can resist uh, preventing the water to to pass through. Now to keep the level of, of attention uh, higher, we are gonna show you a, a, a very short video ab about the water column, so so that you can see the um, the resistance to the water passage that uh, a membrane can offer.
Another very important thing when you're choosing the right membranes, because there are, of course, a lot of membranes out there, and it's very important to, to choose the right one. So another very important uh, thing is the tensile strength. And I'll give you another example. For instance, when you're onto um, an inclined pitch of, uh, of a roof, and um, the installer, for instance, is stepping onto the membrane with his, with his feet, and uh, there are maybe some, um, some nails to keep the membrane in place. It's a um, possibility uh, that you have is that the, um, the membrane is tends to, to tear apart. So, uh, for example, when you're placing a membrane onto uh, uh, an inclined roof pitch, it's important to choose a membrane that, is, um, that has a, a good resistance to a, a very good tensile resistance. And uh, for, for example, the, um, to, to prevent the tearing. Another very important thing is the UV stability. And uh, of course, the, um, a lot of membranes are inside the, um, uh, the build-up of the wall, the construction of the wall. But in the when you're on site, of course, and uh, you leave maybe the, the membrane to protect your, your timber building, sometimes the, um, you know, the on-site works can stop for months, sometimes uh, even more. So you have to make sure that you don't uh, you prevent this. So you, you don't leave your um, your membrane for too long um, outside, you know. And low temperature can be can be a problem, but it's less of a problem, really. So let's have a look of uh, uh, what kinds of um, uh, membranes we have, for example. Let's uh, let's start from the um, the vapor barrier. So that's uh, as you can see below. It's a barrier that stops completely the vapor to pass through. So um, let's see where we have to place it uh, into the build-up, and I will show you immediately. So that's uh, where you are, where you have to place it. So on the warmth side of uh, the construction, of course, because you need to prevent the vapor from getting into the um, your your floor or your your wall or your roof for instance and uh, another kind of um, um, membrane that you can place in the same place so on the inside on the warm uh, side of your of your wall is for example a vapor control layer so it's similar to the previous to the previous one but it's um, it's a membrane that uh, uh, lets some of the vapor pass through and uh, and stops some other part of it. So it's actually controlling the passage of uh, of vapor that we have into our um, wall, for instance. And it's placed exactly in the in the same place, so in the warm side. And I want to to explain something better. So you would say, why choosing this, this vapor control layer when you have another membrane that can stop completely the, the, vo the vapor from uh, getting in? So um, that's a very good question. And um, the, um, the, uh, the thing is that when you're placing uh, a vapor stop layer, so a barrier, you have to make sure that you don't leave any gaps because if you have a gap, all the vapor will all um you know converge there all the va all the vapor will uh, try to pass through that single hole and that can you know uh, can result in a in a local damage and uh, on the other on the on the other hand when you have um, a vapor control layer the vapor is passing through all the surface in a controlled way of course but it's passing through the whole surface of the membrane and um, and therefore, even if you have a small gap, it's not such a big issue. Of course, it's always better not to have it. That's uh, that's for sure. So uh, choosing um, a vapor stop layer is better when you have people inside, which you are hundred percent sure they are gonna do a, a good job. And uh, on the outside of the wall, of course, you have to uh, to prevent water to get in. You have to to make sure that also uh, the wind is not getting in because if the wind gets in 
um, the temperature of the insulation layer, for instance, is uh, is dropping down. And we we explained before that if you have low temperature and the same amount of uh, of humidity, the condensation risks um, increases because it's easier to to reach the dew point. So on the outside of your uh, wall buildup, you you can place the breathable membrane. So once the um, the vapor passes through the the vapor control layers, for instance, it has to escape out to get out from your um, from your wall as soon as possible. And so the breathable membrane is a membrane that is, of course, that uh, lets the vapor go through, but it stops the water from getting in on the other way. So as we can see in this image, it's placed on the outside of the roof or wall. And uh, in, a, in a technical sheet, for instance, in the one that I'm uh, showing to you right now, you can see all these uh, these characteristics that uh, our membranes um, have, for instance. So it's very important to study in the right way the um, uh, the technical sheets. And for instance, here you can see the the vapor transmission, or uh, and also all the other characteristic that we just explained before. So that's uh, just an example of. Uh, how a roof buildup would, would have to look like. So you can see that on the inside, on the warm uh, side of uh, our insulation, we, we have our um, vapor control layer. We have, of course, the, the insulation, which is very important. And on the outside, we have uh, um, a breathable membrane. And uh, it's, in, it's important as well to, to have ventilation, if possible. And then, of course, the the finishing layer, or the the tiles or the roofing that we have to finish it up. And uh, that's another example for wall. And uh, if you try to uh, to keep this um, this build up in mind, you'll find um, um, a building that is working better and which uh, is going to be the, uh, more durable as well, and it's going to last longer. And also, the people who live um into the the building will will um actually have a better feeling inside it so comfort is very important as well and uh, the permanent uh uv stability that's another very important thing we already talked about it and um you have a, a case scenario like this one that i'm showing in the in the picture where a membrane can uh, you know when when UV can pass through, for instance, the uh, the finish of your um, of your wall, and they can get in contact with a with a membrane. So in this case scenario, you have to come back to the technical sheet and uh, and choose a a membrane which has a better resistance to UV, for example. And as I said before, also the 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 breath uh, you know having uh, a ventilated facade having uh, you know air passing through is very good because it enhances the um also the uh, the way that uh, you know vapor is taken away from uh, from the building and uh, this is just a, a very quick uh, picture to show where to place the openings of this uh, ventilated facade uh, because even if you have the the air layer if you do not if you do not have ventilation uh, it doesn't work the same way so um, let's have a look at another stratigraphy for example when you have for example um, a timber frame building it's uh, it's more of an issue because uh, as you as you know, OSB is uh, um, it stops the the vapor; it's not breathable, and therefore, I, I would suggest in this case scenario, for example, to use uh, a vapor stop barrier on the inside, so that you don't have problems uh, on on the outside, for example. And uh, if you have, uh, for example, a CLT wall. Uh, it's uh, common sense and also the producer of CLT they, they say that if you have a CLT with a 
more than than three layers, for example, five layers, you you don't need um, uh, a membrane for the air tightness because uh, the the CLT um, wall is already um, is already make sure that the air tightness is there. So let's uh, talk about air and uh, and wind tightness now, which is just as important because uh, uh, we just said that in our building we we have uh, air passing through, and of course we we and we understood that inside the air we have the vapor, and so um, it can be dangerous for for um, for that reason as well. But inside, if you if we have uh, air passing through our, our building also the the heat is is going out and as well the noise is coming in because uh, as you know noise can pass very easily through air so it's very important to have uh, two main layers and uh, the first one is the air tightness layer layer which is on the inside of our structure and the second one is the wind tightness layer which is important um for the reasons previ previously uh, discussed as well and that's on the outside of the structure so uh, the air tightness uh, layers what how can you can you uh, have that air tightness for example the the membranes are definitely a good way to to make this uh, this air tightness layer but we we also we, we already said before that CLT and can be uh, can be airtight and also the OSB is uh, is airtight and of course and uh, as well the use of plasterboard or a plaster uh, plastered finish of your wall uh, can be airtight as well and uh, the the air tightness you can uh, to to achieve the air the wind tightness. You can use, uh, of course, uh, membranes as well, but you can use as well uh, plaster or, or CLT. So basically the same materials as before. And uh, as you can see here, it's all about the joints because once you placed the membrane, the membrane in place, you have to make sure that you, uh, that you, um, you know, you fill all the the gaps basically using, for example the tape that you're seeing in the picture. So how uh, uh, how it is done? So this is, for instance, our very famous uh, flexi band uh, that you can see here in the image. And uh, we're going to talk about how this is this is done. It, it has um, a release liner that you can use to, to open up the, um, the glue layer. Of course, it has a, an adhesive and it, this is uh, in particular it's a very very strong one it's well known to be a very strong one and um, and of course the, the the support which is the the outer skin of our of our product that uh, you know the one that has the the logo for instance on it so we we can use this this different kind of tapes and there are again uh, a lot of tapes that you can choose from and um, all of them have uh, slightly different features, but all of them are doing the same thing. They are pretty much uh, uh, welding, let's say like that. They are connecting the membranes uh, together so that also um, you, you, don't ha you don't have gaps, for instance. And also they are used on uh, every single gaps that you can have on your building um, to you know close it out so that you, you're not, you do not have uh, air uh, passing through and uh, again the um, the tape needs to be re uh, resistant so it doesn't have to, to tear apart and uh, also um, the resistance to water is, an, uh, is another very important thing so there are few tapes which can just be used on the inside because uh, they m they have more of a paper finish and others that are uh, the the outer skin I is done uh, is more a plastic um, a plastic material and they have a better resistance on the outside as well so it's important to choose the right tape as well 
so mechanical and temperature is very important and to help you out in our um in our um so technical sheet we have as well uh this uh, scheme that is showing you uh where you can uh, use a membrane on which materials for for example you can use a membranes and uh, it's uh, giving you uh, a good idea of for the installation so as i as i said before it's important uh, to first of all to choose the right membrane second of all you have to use it in the right way otherwise it's not working in the right way so let's have a look at some installation uh, uh, hints for instance so the connection to the ground is one of the most important things well, one of the most important uh, things in a timber building especially because you have to protect the timber structure from the the humidity that is always um, you know uh, there uh, when you have a, a connection to the ground so first of all it is it is very important to to keep our timber structure away from uh, from the ground and that's uh, that is usually done with this uh, concrete uh, wall that you have on the bottom of your your CLT wall for example that can be achieved uh, in other ways like for instance uh, that's mo more of a um, uh, you know uh, something that you used in the past not anymore now you can use also uh, a timber structural member on the bottom or you can use uh, uh, innovative uh, innovative innov innovative materials like for example this alustard which is a product that Rafablas just uh, uh, designed and it's uh, available on the market it's basically uh, an extruded uh, alumi aluminum uh <coughs> section that uh, can actually uh, you know keep apart your timber structure from uh, the the ground and uh, so that's the first thing first of all and second of all you have to place the right membranes to prevent the water to you know get in, in contact with your timber for instance or your your structure so let's have a look now at these pictures here that we can see here so first of all it, it is very important to place a, a membrane to prevent the water to to get in contact with our timber structure and uh, another very important thing is the the product that you see down here that's uh, mainly for um the the air tightness so it's basically stopping all the air to uh, from passing through and I have the, the some products right here and I will uh, show them to you right now so as you as you can see here um, the um, this is ma ma mainly uh, done of uh, two uh, little tubes that can be squashed and so when you place your your CLT on top here these are this get squashed and uh, they they close all the the little gaps that you might have this one works uh, pretty much uh, the, the same way so again here you have this uh, this soft part which is uh, basically uh, closing every every single gap that you have for example and um, so you, you can see here a list of products the Rothbus products that you can use for for this um, for this reason another very important thing is the the radon radon is a gas that sometimes it is uh, uh, inside the um, the the earth so it can come out from the earth and it and can be bad for the um, for the the human uh, uh, can be very dangerous for for human so it is uh, better to to place when you have actually this gas coming from the from the earth it is better to to have um a membrane that can actually stop it so that you you don't have the issue anymore and uh, let's have a look at how to to place the membrane of course it has to be placed on the the bottom of your wall and uh, of course uh, it has to uh you know be sealed very well so that you don't have gaps where the the redden can pass through and that's uh for example an example when you have the 
the little concrete wall that we talked about before you have to prevent there with a with a an extra piece of um, the membrane you have to to enclose this one as well into the the protection of the of the membrane for example let's have a look at the windows uh, of our buildings of course uh, it's uh, easier to do a, a continuous wall but uh, as as we know windows are always the part of our building which are has to be uh, constructed really in the right way in the right way because it's uh, where you you might have issues if you don't do things in the right way the issues can uh, can be seen for example in this uh, in this pictures done with a thermal camera and uh, you can see that there is uh, air passing through and those uh, black things that you can see in the image is basically the colder air which is passing through and again we can have the the same issues of condensation as well into our um, in, th in this part of uh, uh, of the window corners, for example, we can see here, for example, uh, superficial condensation, and uh, we can have interstitial condensation as well. So this is our these are the um, the places where we have to protect. And uh, how do we protect them? There are always three levels of protections. There's uh, the, the outside layer, which is the blue level in the picture, and it's basically protecting the, the window from uh, the water coming from outside. We have the yellow level, which is basically uh, in the middle, and uh, it, it re it's really preventing uh, the air and the, um, the, the, the cold air to to get in and uh, as well the noise because noise comes together with air all the time and uh, we have uh, uh, a red layer on the inside for the air tightness so uh, these are just examples of uh, how you can achieve these three levels of protection so for example on the outside you have a membrane that is um, that covers completely uh, your uh, your window so that air and water can get through of course this membrane has to be continuous with the other membranes in your building so that you you make sure continuity is there and it is very important the the yellow layer can be done with uh, with foams I, it is actually better not to cut out the foam like that because this foam is uh, uh, has closed cells and if you cut out cut it out like that you can open up the cells and the air tightness is not um, just as good so I would uh, suggest uh, to push it in with your fingers while it is uh, just uh, being uh, you know placed it's it's very easy to do and uh, you can uh, use for example uh, things like for example this, this soft materials here on the on the middle layer that can actually close every single gaps just uh, we just like we explained before so these are already expanded but they are very small before expanding and uh, they they close every single gap and uh, the final uh, the final level is the red level on the inside and uh, you see for example here that you have your your membrane uh, which is continuous in this case scenario with a with a plaster finish of your of your wall because uh, plaster is uh, airtight just as the membrane so you, you make sure you have the continuity um, these are the, the products that you can use with the, um, uh, to achieve this for windows and uh, just as a reminder I want I want to tell you that you can find already these uh, details onto our website, for instance. So if you if you want to have a look at them, they are free to download. And uh, of course, another crucial part of our building is the um, the roof uh, opening. Works exactly in the same way. We have uh, uh, as well the um, those details down downloadable for free from our website. So. So we, we can continue. Let's talk about the, the, the first floor. The first floor, it is very important to, to close every single gap. 
for instance here we see the five layers uh, CLT for example so you don't need a membrane so you just have to um, to close out the, the gaps here with uh, with tape or in this other in this other example here you close down every the gap of this beam into the, the structure or you you can use this uh, xylophone is really mainly for uh, for um, for noise rather than the, the air tightness but it is slightly airtight as well or you can use uh, products like this one or uh, or like this one here in the picture this is another again another list of uh, the products that you can use and uh, again um, you know an example that we you can download again from our website and the uh, the roof pitch let's see how it works and uh, that's maybe the the most important part of a building because it's actually protecting our building from uh, water and which is very dangerous uh, actually water damage is one of the main damage in in buildings and especially for for timber is very important to to prevent it in the right way so these are uh, some examples of products that you can use for for connections and uh, you can see here the the Aladdin stripe for example this is very good for uh, because it's preventing the noise to to pass from the the above level uh, to below but it's uh, it's very good for air or air tightness as well and I will show you right now the the product so that you have a better idea of how it works it's basically it's done like that it has this uh, this lines that can uh, actually get compressed when it's compressed it becomes just a three millimeter uh, layer and uh, it can be uh, divided into into two like that so that you can actually place it on one side of the beam if you had like a, a wide beam you can place it on one side of the beam and on the other as well and uh, other uh, very important products is, for example, that's an just an example of how you place the membrane when you have uh, uh, cantilevering beams, for example, and how you close out every single gap. This is again a list of the products. And uh, this is just uh, a hint that we'd like to, to give you. Just uh, again on the roof, uh, you can use this... Uh, this this these inclined screws so that you you divide completely the the structure from the finishing and you're you're sure that you have a continuous layer of insulation but of course uh, you would have uh, a membrane here that you have to to punch through to insert a screw obviously and so what's uh, what's best for this case scenario this is a very good product because uh, it's uh, uh, it it gives actually protection to the the membrane. It is a uh, um, especially for nails and and screws. And uh, uh, when the the screw, for instance, is passing through, the uh, the product is really sealing every single gap. And so you're you're sure that you you don't have air passing through. And um, that's again uh, something that I would like to to show you. Um, um, on our website you can find all of this uh, information and a lot of interesting stuff to download that I just uh, explained to you. So the last thing that I would like to, to talk about is the, um, the reaction to fire. Of course on the, on the technical sheet you can see uh, uh, how the reaction to fire works and uh, the we have this uh this letters that we can see below here that show uh, are showing you what is the reaction to fire of a of a membrane for example and let's let's talk about monolithic and microporous ag again and as you can see in the red box uh, a monolithic uh product has got a, a better resi uh reaction to fire than a microporous one so um as well as a lot of other characteristics here, a better durability, a better UV stability, and chemical stability as well. So, uh, of course, monolithic membranes, they cost a little bit more, but they, they are more sophisticated, and they work better 
for all these uh, reasons here. Especially now that attention to fire is always uh, top grade in our buildings, especially in the public buildings. And here we can see, for example, the, the reaction to fire that, uh, our, um, that our membranes have. And uh, we are going to have a look at what this uh, letter means in, in particular. So what does it mean B, S1, D0, or E or F? We're, we're going to see it in the next slide. So the, the European standard EN 13501, it's telling us what the, the reaction to fire is. And the reaction to fire is the, um, the response of a product in uh, contributing by its own decomposition to a fire. And uh, as you can see down here, it is classified according to tests in, in classes. And these classes are A1 or 2, B, C, D, E or F. And um, of course, uh, all these materials, you, you can see all the list of materials uh, down here and uh, basically A, A2 and A1 materials are um, non-combustible materials so they, they cannot um, they don't have reaction to fire at all and uh, the membranes are most of them are combustible materials but they are usually uh, not very combustible and uh, because they are some of them are BS1 and uh, so that means that it's not very combustible. And uh, let's have a look at what the, the other letter means. Uh, what, what about the S? S stands for smoke emission level, and it's uh, divided into three classes. And uh, the, the class one, so S1, is, uh, um, you know, stands for the, the speed of emission of, uh, of an emission of uh, um, smoke, which is uh, very weak. And class number three, it's uh, a, a very high uh, emission of, uh, of smoke, for example. So, for example, to come back to our membranes, uh, uh, the ones to come back, and let's, let's go back to the slide. For example, the Traspir Evo 90, which is a monolithic product. It is uh, combustible, yeah, but it's uh, not very much uh, combustible, like you can see here. S1 means uh, smoke one, so the the first uh, it doesn't produce that many um, that much smoke. And let's have a look at what D stands for. D is uh, the um, the production of flaming droplet. Ma so basically, when uh, something when um, a membrane, for example, is burning, it could produce uh, some flaming droplets which are falling down and which can be dangerous for the rest of the building as well. And so D0, that means that there is no production of this, uh, of this uh, flaming uh, uh, droplets, for example. And that's very important, of course, for a membrane. And like that, my, my, presentati my presentation is over. And uh, I would like to, to show you a final video so that you, you can see uh, really how the reaction to fire in real life, in real terms, how how it works, and uh, so uh, I'll leave you guys with this uh, small video, and I hope you liked the uh, the presentation, and uh, I hope to see you again in the in the wax in the next lesson. Thank you very much.